I'm going to talk to you today about the, you know, arguing your case for the people who have been criticized whenever they've been, you know, heavy gamers. So let's start with our presentation, shall we? So, one thing that I've known ever since I was playing games is they would tell me, well, you know, you play games, but they're not going to be any useful for you. They're not going to help you. Why don't you find something more productive with your time? And I was very really offended at the time because I was being productive. I mean, I'm putting all this time in there. It must be for something. So what I did, you know what? I'm sure other gamers like that have the same thing. So I'm going to give every gamer here the ammunition to fight those very same critics. So the first thing I did is look at the definition of a game. I'm a debater, so that's what we do. We look at definitions. So a definition of a game is a voluntary attempt to overcome unnecessary obstacles. That was my reaction when I first saw that. Why would I want to overcome unnecessary obstacles? Obstacles themselves are a problem. Well, the truth is we want to be challenged. We want to attack those obstacles, but we want to choose when they come out. We don't want them to be thrown at us. So when the time comes when they are thrown at us, we're very prepared. So I'm going to look at some of the basic things that games give you, right? The first thing, of course, is goals. Now, whether you're playing golf or chess, every one of those games has a specific goal. You, in golf, you need to get that ball on the hole. In chess, you need to checkmate the opposing king. In Gears of War 3, you need to defeat the locust horde. The point is, in every game, we have an explicit objective that we need to accomplish. That is something we value in our life, whether it's work or school. We need to have that objective. And because we are trained to accomplish those objectives, we are then very well equipped to accomplish any objective you throw our way. Next thing, of course, is rules. One of the problems we have is that a lot of people say, well, we don't know the value of rules, even though rules are the building blocks of society. But as gamers, we know that. We know, for example, in golf, I can't pick up that ball and just throw it in the hole. I can't knock down my opponent's pieces in chess because he's beating me. I need to follow a specific set of rules in order to accomplish that very same task. Next thing, of course, is feedback. Now, everyone tells us that feedback helps you learn, right? But a lot of people don't understand how to really take feedback. Now, in games, something as simple as a game over screen is a form of feedback. It is telling you that what you did was not effective. You need to do it again. In games like Skyrim, there are stat screens that tell you, well, you need to, you need to improve in these areas. In games like FIFA Manager, when you, you know, get uh, hu humiliatingly beat by another team, they tell you you underestimated your opponent. The point is, these are f effective feedbacks that we gamers are used to, and we deal with them effectively. Now we're going to look at the broader picture of what games give you. And that's going to be the values that they teach you, right? So the first one is family responsibility. When I was, when I was young, uh, I would sit down and my parents would tell me, for us, you don't know how hard it is for us to raise a family, pay bills, go to work, and all those things. And maybe at the time I didn't. But when I played The Sims, I actually felt that very same stress. You would have, I would have to pay the bills and make sure my children go, do well in school. I had to make sure my wife wasn't bored, which took forever, by the way. So all those things, those pressures happened, and I had to deal with those. And The Sims did that. They packaged it in a fun way. Next thing is the value of right and wrong. Uh, by the way, I'm not trying to say anything by putting this guy on the picture. Now, in the game of Grand Theft Auto, you have, the, you have, for example, if you were to beat up a guy and steal his money, you are chased by the police, caught and or killed, and then you have a wanted level. People don't like you anymore. But if you save someone from being mugged, if you stop someone from being hurt, people like you. You get rewarded. People, there's a status. People want you to help them. So that's what we learned. We learned that there's a clear difference between right and wrong, and that we are rewarded for our good behavior and punished for our bad ones. Next thing, well, you didn't think we'd talk about games and not talk about these guys, did you? Now, in Angry Birds, people say, well, you know, it's just a simple game. But it's more than that. Look at, looking at that game, you have a specific objective. You need to knock down that tower with a limited number of birds. You need to think critically. You need to use the tools you have in an effective way and solve that very problem. It challenges your thinking. I remember asking one kid who was playing this game specifically. I told him, why don't you tell me why these birds are angry? His very simple answer was, they don't have wings. Now, as a bird, yeah, I'd be angry too if I didn't have wings. So the point is it challenges your thinking. Now, the next one, of course, is decision-making and motor skills. Now, everyone knows that in a given environment, we need to use our outside surroundings in order to make a decision. And sometimes when you're in a position where you need to make effective decisions and sometimes life-threatening decisions when you're in a position of leadership, like in the military, you need to be able to think critically. You need to make those decisions fast. Now, in games like Counter-Strike, you have, for example, five or six entrances that you need to cover. You have to protect your hostages at the same time. Your opponents are going to use every one of those entrances and try and come at you 
in every possible way. I need to make those decisions quickly and win, because if you don't, you will lose. And it, it's the same in life. If you don't make effective decisions quickly and effectively, you may not survive the next round. Now, of course, school. Now, I can't tell you how many times physics was such a pain for me. They would give me books about Einstein and Newton, and none of them made sense. It was like Greek to me, right? But when I started playing games like Portal, you had to use the laws of physics in that game. When you use a portal gun, you open up two doors, right? That is a wormhole, one of the things they teach you in physics. When you walk through that door, the speed that you entered through the door is the same one you come out from. Gravity is what is propelling you. And that is a law of physics. An object is propelled by gravity. And I started to be fascinated more about physics because what they did in this game is is package it in a fun way. A bunch of a couple of crazy robots, and let's say admit it, we all love crazy robots, are trying to kill you and stop you from getting out of this facility. You need to use the laws of physics in order to beat that game, right? Next one is, of course, history. I was in a class that not one person thought history was useful. No matter how many times our teachers would tell us, it is there for your important, you learn from your history, you improve your future. But it made no sense to them. But with games like Assassin's Creed, for example, I got to actually be a part of the Crusades. I got to meet Leonardo da Vinci. I got to sit down with Salah Hadin in every one of those games and actually interact with them. Of course, in the game, I didn't actually transport through time and sit with those people. But the point is, because of that, because I interacted with them in the game, I wanted to learn more about history. History. I want to actually read more about the Crusades and read more about Leonardo da Vinci and know more about them. That is one of the problems in schools. Because they have not tapped into this effective medium of using games to educate people, a lot of them are becoming archaic. So that's why games teach you. They help use education in a fun way. So to conclude, what have I shown you in this debate? Yes, I've shown you basically that there are tools that the games give you, whether it's goals, whether it's you know, rules, feedback, the bigger values that they teach you in life with decision making and you know, uh, right and wrong. But what is the bigger picture here? Now, we all know, and uh, for a lot of you this is not a secret, that the life and the world is not all sunshine and rainbows. It is a very cruel and mean place sometimes. And we need to use whatever we can in order to survive that storm that life brings our way. Now, we gamers have taken that tool that a lot of people thought is a waste of time, that is in a way a failure on our part because we're not interacting with the real world. We have taken those tools, molded them in a way to show us all these values, to prepare us for these things that life will throw our way. For example, so when that storm of life comes, we are ready for it. So I can guarantee you that every gamer here, whenever he's faced with any problem where he needs to make a critical decision, and that storm's coming his way, he will basically tell to that storm, do your worst, for I shall do mine. So for every gamer here, keep playing your games. Don't let the critics uh, put you down. This is only one way for you to fight them. There is more information out there for you to use and show them that games are effective. For people who aren't gamers, get involved with it. There are so many games out there that will, will be a part of you that you will enjoy. It's not only these games. So for all those reasons, I hope that you help that understand that gamers are, have the edge and that we are prepared for life. Thank you.